So why would you want to roll your own bait? Well, firstly, it's by far the most cost-effective way of producing large quantities of boilies. Secondly, it is dead simple. All you're going to need is one bottle, some base mix and some eggs. That's it. We're going to show you how. Okay, let's have a look at the things you're going to need to make some boilies. First of all, large mixing bowl, either plastic or glass, that would be ideal. Next, you're going to need a sausage gun, this one's from Gardner, long base roller ball. You're also going to need some measures for measuring your liquids. Clean pan, which is going to be full of water and on the hob. A mobile phone or a timer, so you can make sure that you keep track of boiling times for your baits. And you're going to need a clean tea towel to take them out on when you're finished. Last of all, some good quality freezer bags. So now we're going to have a look at what you're going to do with those and how you're going to make your boilies. Right, we've had a look at all the hardware that you need to make your bait. Now it's time to start cracking some eggs into the bowl and actually making some boilie paste. This is the really, really important bit. If you get this bit right, the rest of it is really plain sailing. I've moved everything out of the way so you can see exactly what I'm doing. First of all, eggs into the bowl. Okay. Like we said, there's going to be four, which should equate to about half a kilo of base mix. If you get a bit of shell in the bowl, really, honestly, don't worry about it. Okay, as a general rule, liquids always go in with liquid. So we've got the eggs in the bowl. This is a hemp oil. We want 10 ml of hemp oil, which is two teaspoons. You can always find these knocking around in the kitchen if you haven't got a pet. Okay, 10 ml of hemp oil, four eggs. And then you just want to start beating them. The eggs will break down yellow with a little bit of a green tinge from all that really nice nutritious hemp oil. And that's it. One additive, bit of whiskey, all done. Liquids are fine. Now you start adding base mix, okay? Particularly when you're new to bake making, try and do it a little bit at a time. It's better to take a little bit longer Okay, do it a bit more methodically and get it right rather than start lumping large amounts of powder in and getting a really sticky, lumpy mix. Okay, so a bit of a sprinkle. Then with the fork, again, just round and round the bowl. And every now and then, just scoop around the sides, take all the powder off that's trying to get out of the way. And you very quickly develop something that looks a bit like thick soup. Okay, so we've gone from soup through to getting on porridge and we're just going to keep steadily sprinkling a little bit in. As you get more experienced bake making you'll realise that actually in the early stages you can get away with putting much larger quantities in to begin with. It's the kind of final bits and the fine tuning that really take the time and a bit of expertise. So. We're doing it little by little just so you can follow it and it's definitely the way to do it if you're new to bake making. But you will find that this gets a lot quicker the more times you've rolled boilies. Okay, we're starting to get to that critical time where it's stiffening up quite noticeably. And you can see the amount of base mix we've got left means it's not far off being done. Give it another little sprinkle. Okay. This is where you have to abandon fork, and this is where you have to start getting your hands dirty. Okay, because we're using hemp oil in the live system recipe, I'm just going to smear my hands a little bit, just so that I don't get paste stuck to them. Okay, you can use margarine as well, if there's no oil content in the bait, just a little bit of margarine. So now instead of the fork, I'm actually just using my hands. need a little bit more in. Pick it up, fold it with the heel of your palm. Okay, the clue that you're almost ready is that your bowl is going to be pretty clean. Okay, like a good chef, you shouldn't really need to spend that long cleaning anything in bake making. I'm going to put that to one side. We've got a ball of paste. Okay, this is a giveaway that we're not quite finished. Okay, if it's still tacky, Sticky to the touch, you still need a little bit more powder. All right, so what I'm going to do on a clean surface, I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of powder there, pick it 
up, work it into the paste. Okay, so you can see in a minute that's changed quite noticeably. Okay, no sign of any powder in that. You can put your thumb in it, it's like warm plasticine. That's always the really top test that your paste is right. Stick your finger in it, nothing left on your finger. Nice and soft, pliable, not sticky, not falling apart, no sign of powder. Just like plasticine. Now it's ready to roll. Okay, so you've got a nice pliable, non-sticky uh, boily paste. That's what you spent your time making. The important thing now is not to let it get ruined by drying out. We're going to put some in the sausage gun. Um, it's not going to take the entire mix. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit left over. And what you're going to have to do to begin with is you're going to have to shape your dough, your paste, in order to be able to go in to the gun. And again, you'll notice there's a little sheen here. I've just put a couple of drops of hemp oil both on the table and on the, on the palms of my hands. That's about right, very simple. Okay, that can now get loaded into the gun. Okay, but you've still got a blob of paste left over. If you're doing a kilo mix, it'll probably be about half and half. If that dries out, it's not gonna make good boilies. Simple as that, and you're working in a kitchen probably, you've probably stuck a ring on to warm the water, it's gonna be warm. Whatever you do, always, any paste you're not using, stick it in a quality freezer bag, twist it, turn it, leave it to one side so it doesn't dry out, okay? Because there's nothing worse than doing half your mix and it being brilliant, getting to the back half and it's gone all crusty on the outside, just doesn't make boilies, okay? The Gardener Sausage Guns come with a range of pre-cut tips. We've got selection here. Uh, I believe that suits all the different types of rollables that they manufacture. So you've got everything from you know tiny pea size 10 millers through to you know your 18s, 20s, that sort of thing. Generally, with a well-behaved paste, uh, the matching nozzle to the rollerball, it will just come out and it will be an absolutely ideal fit for the channel in the table and will make you a nice round boilie. Some mixes you will learn uh, need handling slightly differently. The sausages might expand a little bit as they come out the gun or something, but generally you'll be fine with these and we'll look at fine tuning them later. Okay. You're also going to need something to put your boilies on. So I've got a plate again, which I've just put a light smear of hemp oil on. So we'll leave that there and we'll look at actually making the sausages. Okay, very, very straightforward. You just pump them out a bit like mastic work around the house. Okay. A couple of little tricks that are gonna help you get the best boilies easiest. The top channels, or the top half of the rolling table, if you cut your sausages to that length, Okay, so they're the length of the top of the rolling table. You will find quite coincidentally, well done Rick Gardner, that is also the width. So you're gonna fill all the channels and you're gonna be making boilies most effectively. So you're gonna get the maximum number of boilies every sweep of the table. Again, drying out can be a problem whenever you're working with paste. So you don't want to do 25 of these ropes at a time or sausages at a time because they will just dry out and sooner or later you'll run into problems. If you do three or four, then all you want to do is lay them one at a time across the rolling table, push firmly down over the top, keep hold of the back, three or four sweeps backwards and forwards. And there you go, absolutely easy as you like. You've now got some homemade, really smooth, nice and round, live system boilies. And it's just a case of repeating that until the gun's empty. You need to find another plate to fill. You just keep on rolling. And out come those beautifully round live system baits. You can put two sausages across these tables. If you're not careful, you can then end up accidentally joining two together and ended up with great big rugby balls. It's just as quick, I think, to do one sausage and do it really well. Press a bit harder, and then you get that really nice, smooth, round finish to all of the baits. 
It's worth mentioning as well that if you want to do really high volume bait work, uh, there are some even bigger roller balls than these. I think they're probably XL tables. Uh, two handed operation and you can lay a rope that's probably three or four times that length, which means that you're rolling more boilies each time. Uh, also bigger capacity guns obviously will extrude quicker and keep more paste sort of in good condition at the same time. So they're available as, as options if you really get into it and want to produce real mass sort of bait. However, for most people, this is a really economical way of doing it. You know, it's very, very cost effective. You don't have a major outlay to, to begin with. And actually, with a little bit of elbow, elbow grease, you can produce baits quite effectively, quite efficiently, particularly if you team up with either a mate or someone else fishing the same venue and do it together. You find that when you split the labour, you can really start knocking through some quantities of bait and fill a freezer actually quite quickly and in much more cost effective fashion. If you're disappointed with the, with the bait that you see coming off the rolling table, the likelihood is it's just to do with the size of the sausage that's coming out the gun. Okay? When you've got it right, you'll be able to lay that sausage in the groove of the table and you will see that there's quite clearly about a millimetre of space down each side. It doesn't fill the channel completely, there has to be a little bit of room in there. You are only going to roll really nice round bait with a sausage that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the table. Okay? This one looks a really snug fit and you might imagine it's absolutely perfect, not at all, okay? If there's no space between the groove in the rolling table and the edge of the sausage, that's too big. I'm gonna show you exactly what happens now. Okay, if you've got too much paste in those channels, all you're going to do when you roll them backwards and forwards, because there's too much material to be made round, you're going to create rugby balls rather than round boilies. And also, because of the backwards and forwards motion of the top of the table, you're going to start pulling them apart as well. So the two real telltale giveaways that the rope, the sausage, is too high a diameter are not round, i.e. rugby ball shaped, and also the baits are sort of pulling themselves apart during the rolling process and you end up with holes in the centre. Okay, just drop the size of the nozzle. Right, we've come to the end of the rolling the mix. Uh, just a little word on, on what you do with your boilies when you've actually rolled them. All I do, very, very gentle finger pressure, just roll them off the channels onto a very lightly greased plate. Again, this is hemp oil or it could be margarine. You don't have to worry about treating them with kid gloves. I mean, they're actually quite robust because the paste is the right consistency. If you rolled it too soft and you had really sort of soft, tacky paste, then you'd end up with big flat spots. But because we've got the paste right, they're actually quite robust little things. I mean, you can see these have all fallen on top of each other, but effectively they're, they're quite robust, round little things already. You can move them around without flattening them and squashing them. So now they're ready to go to be boiled. Okay, we've made a couple of mixes, now it's time to start the boiling. They've been quite happy sat on plates, the water's on a steady and rolling boil. All I'm going to do, very, very gently roll them off the plate into the pan. We'll start the timer. 1 minute 30, 90 seconds is about right for a 14, 15 mil bait. That should skin it really, really nicely. And then, after the baits have gone in, very, very gently, just move the baits around a little bit, just in case there's any that are stuck together. Because of the consistency of the paste that we've made, actually these have been good as gold. You can see that the longer they're in, the more the water recovers and the stronger that they boil. And your countdown timer will tell you when they need taking out. Try and keep your boiling time consistent between all your boilies that are the same size. Okay, the boilies have had 90 seconds in order to boil. I've scooped them out of the pan. What you really need is something like a draining spoon so you can scoop them out really, really quickly, really steadily and drain the water off as you go. Put them on a clean tea towel. Um, you will see that they're pale. They're also very soft, actually, and they're steaming. You can see the steam still coming off them. Now, when you see a boilie when it's just come off the boil, 
Uh, it's the equivalent of a boiler having a bit of a bad hair day. It's when it looks at its absolute worst. And quite often people look at them and think, oh, is that what I've rolled? They're not very good. Honestly, whatever you see on your detail, they're going to look infinitely better in 10 or 15 minutes' time when they've just hardened up a little bit, dried and darkened off. Okay, so whatever boilies you've got on here, you just want to make sure that the surface of them dries. So just leave them to steam dry and then every now and then just roll them around. Try not to keep them clumped together because if they're that hot and that soft and they're all stuck together, you will get sort of flat spots and dark spots on them. Just want to make sure they've got a little bit of room. You can carry on with your next mix. You can start prepping your next mix and then just every few minutes, give them a little roll, just keep them moving and leave them like that for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour if you have to, until they're cool to the touch. But really, after this, all it's down to is time. Once they've finished drying off, uh, you can leave them overnight, but within a couple of hours, these baits will be fine for freezing. Get yourself a nice quality freezer bag. Make sure they are definitely cool. They do need a couple of hours at least. Bag them up, suck the air out, not the top, put them in your freezer. And if you're going to use a couple of different types of baits, take advantage of the labels and actually mark it so you know what it is. One last tip. When people have made their own boilies, especially for the first time, the temptation is always, oh, I wonder what that's like. What's it smell like? Stick your nose straight in there. But actually, now is not the time to smell your boilies at all because your nose has been so desensitised because you've been working around things like hemp oil and the smell of the base mix that you're not going to smell them properly anyway. Okay, so wait until you take them out of the bag and go fishing with them. That's when you really find out what they smell like for real. So as you can see, making your own boilies is incredibly simple and really cost effective. And whether you prefer Odyssey Triple X, Engage or Meteor, the same principles apply. One liquid, eggs and base mix. And for every kilo of base mix that you use, you're going to produce 1.3 to 1.4 kilos of finished boilies.